All right, thanks, Peter. Now, look, tonight on the hour, a rough road for the auto industry. For GM and Chrysler, the engine light is red, the tires are flat, but not for Ford. It hasn't asked for a bailout, but there's still gas in the tank, isn't there? So how has Ford hit the brakes on bankruptcy and kept the engine running? The CEO of Ford Canada, David Mondragon, is here. And yes, I did make six really bad car metaphors in 30 seconds. <laughs> So put that in your tailpipe, as it happens. <laughs> it's the hour. All right, so there's some of the stories that happened in the world today. Uh, we should tell you something. There's an update on the economy, uh, more bad news about the economy. The unemployment rate, uh, which is a real uh, indicator of why it's a problem, is now up to 8%. That's up nearly two points from a year ago. That is the highest that has been in seven years. If you go to October, you know, since October, 357,000 people in this country have lost their jobs. 357,000. And some economists are saying that the rate could hit 10% before it comes down. And of course, if the auto industry collapses and uh, unemployment goes up, so just board up your windows, because that's when trouble really hits. <laughs> we all know how bad it is for GM and Chrysler. They get the bailouts. But what about Ford? Ford hasn't asked for a bailout. It says it doesn't need one. You've got to wonder, is that just the company being prideful, or is Ford really better off? Well, the CEO of Ford Canada is a man by the name of David Mondragon. We can ask him. He's here. Let's set it up. You know, with all the trouble in the auto industry, it's easy to forget that when you talk about the big three, Ford has not asked for a bailout. They say they're going to get through this one on their own, and there's an awful lot to get through. Last year was the worst in Ford's history. The company lost more than $14 billion, shut down 17 plants, laid off 50,000 people in the U.S. Now, Ford is about $26 billion in debt, but with some restructuring, well, they say they figured out how to cut 10 billion bucks. All right, fine, what about car sales? Well, in the first few months of the year, they're down 40% from a year ago, that's for the big three, and now they're at their lowest level in 27 years. But Ford says there's a silver lining. Its market share is going up each month. So, if sales pick up a bit next year, the company says it'll be okay. Ford also renegotiated retiree health care plans with the American auto workers and sold off several luxury brands. Now, as for its Canadian operations, Ford says it needs deeper concessions than GM got from its workers, or there could be more job cuts. Over the past nine years, 8,000 Ford workers here have lost their jobs. Ford has also asked Ottawa to introduce a program for people to trade in their old cars, you know, like 10 years or more. And if you trade it in and you buy a new vehicle, well, then the government would give you 3,500 bones. Germany has adopted a similar program, and car sales are up by 40%. Please welcome the CEO of Ford Canada, David Mondragon. Okay, so your name, is, your name is Mondragon, but it's actually Mondragon. 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 Yep, it's a Hispanic name. There you go. Yeah? Why didn't you? Mondragon sounds so Mondragon. Well, uh, I've anglicized it, kind of <laughs> make it a little easier people, for people to remember oh, and to spell. Trust me, as a Strombolopolis, I feel it. Um, <laughs> so you've been the CEO of Ford Canada for what, about eight months now? About eight months, yeah. Oh, and, and so when you walked into the job, you, you obviously knew what was coming. Like, it was starting to happen already, sort of the, the, the downturn. Did you, did, did you get a real sense of, of, of where the auto industry was going to be when you stepped into the role? Actually, uh, when I got here in September, the Canadian industry uh, was much stronger than the U.S. industry. We, we, the US industry. We were experiencing growth at the time. Uh, and our industry in Canada through October was up 1% year over year, where the U.S. industry was on a pretty rapid decline. Uh, the, the industry here started to decline in November. November was down 10%, 20% in December. And in January, it went to a full-fledged decline at 25% down, 28% the next month. And last month, we were down 15%. This green scrap plan, the scrappage plan that you I mean, we talked about this on the show uh, when it first came out, the idea of asking the government to give money back to people who buy, who trade in old cars. And you, and you want that. Are you a supporter of this one? Huge supporter. Uh, I've actually got uh, more notes from consumers across the country about it. My neighbors came over and talked to me about a scrappage program. They're ready to trade in their 15-year-old Explorer to buy a new one, but th they need some incentive. Quite frankly, a scrappage program that we're looking at uh, is a mechanism, a mechanism that's already in place by the Canadian government. They already have a scrappage program today. $92 million are in the budget. Uh, it pays the consumer $300 to trade in a vehicle. Mm -hmm. Now, it doesn't work because the average 10-year-old vehicle is worth $3,000 to $4,000. We're promoting a program that would give consumers, and by the way, 
Uh, this isn't bailout money. This isn't automotive money. This is money that goes in the hands of consumers, consumers that are most in need in Canada. Somebody driving around a 10 or 15 year old vehicle in Canada, trust me, they don't want to be driving around in a 10 or 15 year old. They want to drive in a new one. They can't afford a new one. They need a leg up. But that and money, this gives them a leg up. But that money comes from the government, which means it comes from the taxpayer anyway, doesn't it? So Why it's not give it back to them? Give it back to them and, and do a bunch of things. First off, we help that consumer, give them a leg up so they can buy a new vehicle that's greener, that's safer. The, the uh, Wall Street Journal just had an article a week ago that said that a, a vehicle traded in today, they got 18 miles per gallon and gets 30 miles per gallon in a new vehicle. That's going to save the average consumer $780. That's disposable income in very difficult times that they can redeploy, buy groceries, help their kids in school, some, do some different type of purchases. But bottom line is it'll stimulate our economy in Canada, not to mention the green aspect of this. Uh, a 10-year-old vehicle in Canada, and by the way, 30% of all vehicles in Canada are over 10 years old. So a 10-year-old vehicle pollutes the environment 12 to 18 times more than a new vehicle. You've got a great environmental aspect with regard to pollution. It cleans up the environment, but you get greater fuel of economy as well, which means lower cost of ownership for the consumer and a better value. All right, stick around, because when we come back, I want to talk to David about what happens with a GM and Chrysler and, and how closely associated or how many conversations I imagine you would have with the CEOs of those companies. More with David Mondragon when we come back. Now, do you have conversations with the uh, with the heads of uh, GM and Chrysler? Uh, did the three of you kind of sit down and just and talk about what's going on? Yes, we met yesterday. Yeah, yeah we have a group called formally this, or informally. Well, it's formal. Okay. We, we we have a group, uh, a, a, a club, let's say. Yeah.